In this video, we're going to talk about templates and layouts in Nexus 13, how they're different and when to use which. We're going to also build a simple application where we can see these differences in action. So let's go. Let's just start from the documentation and see the file conventions that we have access to inside the app router in Nexus 13. One of the files that we can use inside any route segment is this template.js or .ts file which is a specialized re-rendered layout UI. So this is referring to our layout. Now, if you're not familiar with the file conventions or what a layout is, uh, I have other videos on the channel where I go in deeper details about this new file convention or specifically the layouts. But from a high level, a layout is just a component that wraps your page components. So therefore you can have shared layouts between different route segments, or you can have and nested layouts easily by creating a layout.js file inside of any route segment. Now a template file is similar to a layout in that it wraps its uh, chart layout and pages, but unlike layouts that persist across routes and maintain their state, templates are going to create a new instance for each children on navigation. So what does this mean? So let's go to our application to see this in action. Now I've created this simple Next.js application where I have this top row navigation header and also this nested layout where I can just navigate between different pages, the about page and the contact page. I'm going to jump into the code and see where we're starting from in a second. But what I'm trying to explain here is that that top row, which is part of our layout, is not going to re-render when I'm changing these routes that is going to be there and the only thing changing is this page. This is also similar for this site navigation because this is also a nested layout. So upon navigating between different pages inside of a layout, these layout components are not going to re-render. They stay the same and the only thing which is re-rendered is this page component. Now if you use a template instead of the layout, the only difference is that now on navigation between the, these different pages, for example, if you're using a template here for this site navigation, it is going to create a new instance of that template for each children every time that you're navigating between different pages. Now you might wonder why would you wanna use a template instead of a layout? Well, some use cases may be if you're implementing any logic that requires or depends on use effect or use state, things like logging page views, which we're going to implement together, or a per page feedback form, for example, that has its own state, you would want to use template because you want to recreate or resync your use effect or reinitialize the state every time that you actually navigate between dif different pages. Whereas if you're using a layout, it's going to persist this state between navigations and it's not going to re-render. Now, the other use case is any time that you want to change the layout's default behavior. For example, if you have suspense boundaries inside your layout, the fallback that you have defined for your boundary is going to only render once and for the first time. And any other time after that, it's just going to show the fallback because if it has already shown the fallback once. If you want to re-render your fallback for your suspense boundary every time on navigation, you would want to use a template or that's an instance of you changing the default behavior of the framework. So let's actually implement this logging page views and see this in action. Let me start by explaining what I've done so far or the starting point and then we're going to build on top of it together. So as I mentioned, I started a brand new Next.js application and all I had done so far was to create this company route group. If you're not familiar with route groups, I'm going to include a link to a video that I've explained them in Next.js 13 or inside the app router. But from a high level, route groups are for organizing your routes inside of a folder without affecting the URL. So for example, inside this company group, I have an about page and a contact page. But the fact of the matter that I have created this company inside of this parenthesis doesn't change the route. So I can still access the about on forward slash about instead of going to forward slash company forward slash about. So this route group doesn't affect the URL, URL segments. So inside of this company route group, I have an about. There is a page inside of it. This page is responsible for rendering this about page. 
and a contact page again similar concept with a component responsible for rendering the contact page and the beauty of this route group other than organizing my files into one place or one folder is that now I can share a layout between these segments that are inside of this route group so I have this layout where I'm actually rendering this part of it let me just close this off so you can see better uh, my layout is receiving children this is going to be the nested child page component and it's rendering this side navigation and then it's putting these children which are going to be our different pages inside of this main which is this right hand side uh, of this navigation so now any page that's inside of this route group is going to use this layout and these page components are going to be plugged inside of this route layout or be plugged inside of this children okay and now the last thing is our root layout so let me just quickly also show you this this is what comes out of the box the only thing that i've added is this header this header is going to now be shown for every page because this is the root layout which is shared between all of our page components i'm rendering those links up top so that i can navigate between my home page my contact and my about page so let's just go back inside of our route group and see how can we go about implementing a logic that's depending on use effect for example to log page views so if inside of this root or company layout that i have let me just close this off if i want to just lock something over here so i'm going to use use effect from react and all we're going to do here is to console log let's say logging page view so i want to count or log the number of page views to an um, external system or in this case we're just faking it by logging it internally now i'm using use effect which means i have to use a client component and i'm going to use a client component by adding this use client directive up top so let me just open up the console down here let me just also make this bigger so you can see so what we are doing here inside of the layout which is shared between all the routes or segments inside of this company group which are about and contact and for each one we're just logging a page view okay so if i go to the about page you can see it says logging page view now the reason that it's logging it twice even though we told it to run once is that in uh, strict mode react actually runs your effects twice to make sure that if you're doing anything wrong inside of your effects you know it before you actually go to the production if you want to disable that you can go to your next config and here we can say react strict mode and let's just turn this to false i'm going to save and i'm going to just stop the dev server and restart the dev server here okay let me just refresh this page okay let's open this in a new page close the previous one and also open up our console and now if i clear this go to the about page you can see this logging page view or the effect is only running once now watch what happens when i'm navigating between different pages so let me close this off if i now go to the contact page this effect is not running again it's not logging this page view again so as i'm navigating this is the only time that it was logged it was for the first time that this layout was rendered and that's how layout layouts are supposed to work they only render once and they do not re-render on navigation when the page changes the only thing that's re-rendering is the actual page component here well while this is good for performance optimization because you're not actually re-rendering that layout that is not actually changing between these two pages the top navigation or this sidebar navigation are the same so there's no reason to re-render them in some cases like this case that we want to actually log page views so we want to count how many times the user is actually seeing a specific page or actually navigating between different pages you may want to change this default behavior so let's actually see that in action by adding a template to this file so let me just go here and add a template dot tsx to our file if you go back to the documentation for the template it has a very similar structure to our layout 
in that it is a function that receives a children and it just wraps the children with whatever component that you decide to. In this case, we don't want to wrap it with anything. But what I want to do is that I want to bring in this use effect inside of this template and run it here. So let's also import it from React here. And now our template is a client component. So I have to use the use client directive. I'm going to go back to the layout and actually eliminate the use effect and use client. Now our layout is a server component rendering this site navigation, but we're also adding a template which is going to wrap our pages inside of the layout to actually do this logging. Now, before we actually test this, I want to mention something about the hierarchy of these different files that you have inside of your route. So if you go to the docs uh, for routing, uh, just where they talk about the file convention, you can see this component's hierarchy. Let me just make this a bit bigger. So these are the different files that you can have in each folder or e in each route segment. The layout, the template, error loading, these are for actually rendering suspense boundaries, error boundaries, or the actual UI for your page. Now, the way that this is going to turn in React components is that your page is going to be here, wrapped with the error boundary, wrapped with the suspense boundary, wrapped with the template, and the template is going to be inside the layout. Now, you can use template on its own too. So what we could have done is to just turn this layout into a template. It is going to do the same thing. It's going to just wrap every page component and we could have just added that use effect there. I just wanted to show you that you can have a template and a layout and the template, uh, the layout is just going to wrap your template. Okay, that out of the way, let's just go back to the documentation, clear this out. Let me also refresh this page, going to the home page. let's refresh. I'm just getting rid of the cache that we have on the client side. If I go to the about page now, we could see the log page view. If I go to the contact, you see the number two is actually increasing the number of times or every time that I'm changing this, it's running this effect again and again because this template is running again and again, it's re-rendering. So therefore it's re-running this effect. Now, let me also show you this difference between templates and layouts in a different way. So imagine we want to add some animation to our navigation links on this side navigation. So for this, I'm going to use Framer Motion and I'm going to replace this uh, links with motion from Framer Motion. This allows you to actually run animations on elements. Framer Motion in general is a fantastic library for doing animations, so I recommend checking it out. I'll also do uh, a video on it soon in the future but for the purpose of this video i just want to show these animations on this links on the site navigation so they have a little stagger and then they fade in when we actually open the page up but we're still inside of a layout which is going to make this animation only run once so let's see this in action so if i just go to the home page let me clear the console if i go to the about page i'm going to get an error because now i have to turn this into a client component to be able to use Framer Motion. I also need to actually install Framer Motion. So let me just go ahead and stop the dev server here and PM PM add Framer Motion. Okay, let me restart the dev server here. If I go back to the home and refresh our application, let me also clear the console here. Now watch what happens when I navigate to the about page. You should see the navigation links on the sidebar actually animate in as you saw there. But if I move to the contact page or switch between the two pages, even though the pages are changing, the routes changing, the animation is not running again. And this is because we are using a layout and layouts only run once in the beginning and don't re-render. This is for performance optimization. And it's good because you're avoiding those whole React components to re-render unnecessarily when nothing has changed. Now let's contrast this by running the same thing inside a template and watching this animation rerun. So I'm going to copy everything inside of our layout and bring it inside of our template here. Let's just save this. And I'm going to this time get rid of our template. So instead of having both together, I just replaced everything that I had inside of my layout, but just put it inside of our template. Let's go back to the home page and re-render. Now watch the animations running when I navigate to the about page, but also every time that I'm switching between these two pages, 
This is because now this component is running inside of a template file, which re-renders this component every time, making these animations rerun every time that we switch pages or upon navigation. Now, I'm not suggesting to go ahead and add these animations to your sidebar navigation or change your layouts with the template. It's just that to understand that layouts actually persist their state. They don't rerun effects. They only run once, whereas templates actually re-render every time the route changes or user navigates to a different page. Now, as far as the implementation goes behind the scenes for templates to have this behavior, if you go to the documentation for template files, and scroll down, you can actually see templates are regular components that just use a unique key to force React to re-render the content of this component. Now, this is a React-specific feature. It's not Next.js. You can use a key prop, a unique key prop on any component in React, and that forces React to re-render it. Here, they're using the route parameters or the specific path that you're on as a unique key for our template to re-render. And you can actually see our template is also nested inside of our layout. And that's a wrap for this video, folks. I hope you learned the difference between templates and layouts and when to use which. Generally speaking, you would want to stick to your layouts because they have this performance optimization by preventing similar components or components that haven't changed or your layout not to re-render every time that the user navigates between different nested pages. But if your specific use case requires actually your state to be reinstantiated or for an effect to resync, or in this case, an animation to rerun, you can use uh, templates, you can replace them with the layout or use layouts and templates together to have that functionality that needs to rerun inside the template, but also keep the stuff that doesn't need to rerun inside of your layout. If you have any questions, like always, hit me up in the comments and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.